Hey, hello everybody and happy Monday. This is Dr. Ken Mewich, Fibromyalgia Wellness Center, Stetson Chiropractic Clinic. And uh, I've got a subject that we sort of covered in the past about a year ago, but uh, there have been a lot of questions uh, that have come up, not only uh, from patients, but also in my clinic concerning this. And so I thought I would uh, do a little bit more detail on it. Uh, and that is the confusion between fibromyalgia and about 15 other conditions. If there's another condition that is more frustrating and more difficult to diagnose, I don't know what it is. Uh, and yet, uh, we've, we see it each and every day. We see so many different fibromyalgia patients with so many other conditions. Matter of fact, I've tried to stress the fact that if you have fibromyalgia, I have not met since 1990 when I first started working with fibromyalgia patients, any fibromyalgia patient that just has fibromyalgia. They have other conditions. And that's what makes it difficult for a number of reasons, not only to treat fibromyalgia, but also to diagnose it and differentiate it from the other conditions that, uh, that actually are involved with fibromyalgia. There's 15 of them. Uh, and so I thought I'd go over them very, very quickly with you uh, and see if we can cover it. If we can't, uh, I think I'll have to do uh, the uh, confusion between fibromyalgia and other conditions, part two. But anyway, there's uh, chronic fatigue. There's... Um, Hypo, hypothyroidism, hypoglycemia, irritable bowel, celiac, um, rheumatoid arthritis, osteoarthritis, um, uh, MS, Sjogren's, diabetes, headaches of two different kinds, cluster and migraine, uh, polycystic ovarian problems, lupus and Lyme disease. All of those have very, very similar condition, excuse me, symptoms that uh, actually make fibromyalgia very difficult to diagnose. So that's why when you go into a doctor, the doctor says, oh, what do you, what's your primary problem? And you tell him, he says, well, then that, that's this area here and so forth. He's looking automatically into certain areas rather than a much greater, uh, wider picture of those of us that work with fibromyalgia patients. Uh, it, it's not a knock, it's just very, very frustrating. Uh, and as I talk to more and more doctors, uh, I'm actually learning uh, more, and I'm, I'm starting to work with uh, some uh, integrated uh, and functional doctors because uh, there's so many uh, patients that are coming in with, with uh, more complex secondary conditions, shall we say. Now, in our protocol, just as an aside, <clears throat> it takes care of the fibromyalgia the vast majority of the time. I mean, probably 90% of the time, it's un unusual that we don't help a fibromyalgia patient. However, uh, we don't really reverse those other conditions. If you recall, you know, we might be able to uh, uh, alleviate a lot of the problems as far as osteoarthritis and uh, hypothyroidism, hypoglycemia, so forth, by giving you certain directions and, and so forth, and even chronic fatigue. But we're not reversing those conditions. We are reducing a lot of the symptoms in, in those conditions because uh, if they mimic fibromyalgia, as the fibromyalgia symptoms go down, so also these go down. Now, chronic fatigue is very, very interesting because it has a lot of symptoms that are, are similar to fibromyalgia. Uh, joint pain, headaches, uh, sleep deprivation, uh, difficulty in concentration, uh, fatigue, obviously. But a couple of things that are, are totally different from chronic fatigue uh, are that there's no 11 out of 18 points. Uh, there's no uh, lumps and bumps and mapping and so forth. And the other big thing is that it waxes and wanes, which means it comes and goes. Chronic fatigue, sometimes you have good days. And sometimes you don't have such good days. Sometimes it'll be gone, and all of a sudden, for no reason, it'll come back again. So that's a very, very frustrating problem with chronic fatigue. But uh, that makes it differentiate from fibromyalgia, along with the other things I mentioned. Uh, hyperthyroidism. Hyperthyroidism is, is a uh, thyroid hormone problem deficiency. Uh, and oftentimes it, it develops slowly. Uh, it has depression, uh, hair loss, uh, uh, dry skin, uh, fatigue, uh, constipation, uh, sensitivity to cold, weight gains and losses, joint pain, aches and so forth. Uh, but uh, hypothyroidism is uh, a lot easier to diagnose actually through blood tests. There's T3, T4 uh, blood tests and thyroid specifics that they can actually evaluate uh, and differentiate. You know, when I was working with fibromyalgia, especially with Dr. St. Amon in our protocol, uh, we were doing exceptionally well. Then a doctor, I think out of Kansas City, came up with this uh, fantastic thing that said uh, fibromyalgia can be taken care of by just uh, taking uh, th uh, taking uh, iodine. 
Uh, and so he had all these patients, uh, even out-of-towners, uh, asking for iodine and going on these different things. Problem with that is that you have to make sure how much iodine you take, because a lot of people were taking too much, not enough, so forth and so on. And so there's a lot of frustration. You know, so when a new thing comes out, everybody's excited about it until finally it doesn't work. And then, oh, Chase, you know, what, what are we going to do now? We're kind of stuck. Uh, hypoglycemia, very, very interesting. Uh, it's a low blood sugar aspect. Uh, can be very easily taken care of with a proper diet. Uh, the diet consists of uh, removing starches and uh, uh, high glycemic products, not the low, what I've talked about, the starches and a variety of other carbohydrates that are not good for you, and of course, sugar. The, uh, the symptoms are headache, irritability, dizzy, confusion, anxiety, so forth and so on, loss concentration, heavy sweats. Uh, but again, it's easily uh, controlled and easily differentiated from fibromyalgia. Uh, irritable bowel uh, and celiac. Uh, there are different irritable bowel. Uh, is difficult to diagnose only because of the fact that oftentimes it does come on slow. It's one of those things that affects the large intestine. Uh, and a lot of symptoms uh, are obviously those which uh, involve the, uh, uh, the stomach and uh, the GI system. Because with the fibromyalgia, I thought I'd mention, we have this brochure. And the brochure covers a lot of the different symptoms in relationship to groupings, like central nervous system. That would be fatigue uh, and listlessness and anxiety and so forth. Musculoskeletal, that would be obviously uh, aches and pains in muscles and, and tissue and so forth. Uh, irritable bowel, often called leaky gut, sorry, uh, spastic colon, all the different things like that. Uh, and their symptoms, uh, genital urinary, uh, again, uh, we're talking about uh, the bladder and so forth. Uh, dermatological, we're talking about things like um, hives uh, and uh, uh, blotches and eczema and so forth and so on, brittle nails, fingernails. And then the miscellaneous symptoms, everything from headaches to dizziness to, to uh, ringing in the ears, numbness, tingling, so forth and so on. So the irritable bowel actually would be uh, the uh, and the celiac disease would actually fall under the same thing, where you have cramping, constipation. These are the same things that fibromyalgia patients have. Cramping, gas, bloating, indigestion, nausea, pain in the stomach, so forth and so on. Uh, so uh, IBS, irritable bowel, uh, and celiac. Now, celiac is a lot easier, uh, although uh, it's become a lot, le a lot easier, and that's because uh, it tr it's triggered by gluten. Uh, I have a daughter that's uh, highly sensitive uh, with uh, gluten, I ended up in the hospital a couple of times, wouldn't listen to that. I told you the story about that until one of the doctors said, you know, you have a gluten problem, you have celiac disease. So if you stay off of gluten, you can actually control that. And again, some of the problems that, uh, the symptoms that I went over, the gas and bloating and, and, and stomach pain and so forth, like fibromyalgia patients, uh, is not, it's not if, if you just control the gluten. Very, very simple. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis is a collagen destructive disease. Uh, it's called an autoimmune disorder, uh, and it involves the joints. Uh, now, rheumatoid arthritis uh, is destructive for the most part, but there are certain conditions uh, that are not destructive in rheumatoid arthritis. When I say destructive, the joints, the ends of the joints get literally eaten away. But uh, in uh, one of the specifics, polymyalgia rheumatica, polymyalgia rheumatica, it's where you have pain, but non-destructive uh, symptoms or a condition in both shoulders, both hips, uh, both knees, so forth and so on, not just one side. Uh, and it is, uh, it is uh, found through blood tests, and it's very easily treated, matter of fact. Uh, and matter of fact, the pain can go away literally within 24 to 48 hours. I've had patients diagnosed with this, and we sent them out, and uh, uh, the uh, treatment is very simple very uh, uh, easy to do and very easy to control. Now, osteoarthritis is totally different from rheumatoid. It's not a destructive. It's a wear and tear type of condition where you've done something wrong, you got in an accident, or, or maybe you were born just with the bones out of place a little bit and they wear, they wear on each other and then uh, what starts to form is calcific deposits in forms of, of lips and spurs, they call it. You've heard of, of arthritic spurs, uh, osteophytes and syndesmophytes if you're a doctor. But anyway, <clears throat> the bottom line is that uh, they're wear and tear types. It's not something you catch. It's not something you're born with. It's something that evolves and develops over a period of time. Now, 
very, very interesting because, again, you have aches and pains in the joints and muscles and so forth and so on, just like rheumatoid arthritis. But the interesting thing is that with osteoarthritis, motion actually helps relieve the pain, whereas in rheumatoid arthritis, activity, motion actually will aggravate it. Isn't that kind of interesting? Why? Because in RA, as I mentioned, rheumatoid arthritis, the joints are already being damaged and, and eaten away. Whereas in uh, osteoarthritis, the joints are still there. It's just that they get these spur spurs around them. And so what you want to do is you want to produce some oil for the joints to move easily. Okay, uh, MS. MS is uh, an autoimmune disease again. has to do with uh, the brain and brain communication. And what happens is you get brain lesions. It takes a while for it to evolve and develop over a period of time. Uh, diagnosis is... Uh, uh, through either spinal tap or MRI. Oftentimes it does take years because those those brain lesions don't show up all the time right away. And so consequently, you might have a, a, a period where a couple of years. This is interesting also. This condition waxes and wanes. So you can have aches and pains and so forth over your body uh, and nothing seems to really help and all of a sudden it goes away and then comes back again, so forth and so on. Very, very interesting how that evolves over a period of time. But uh, that... Once they find it out of MRI or uh, the other tests, that is very easy to, to recognize. Again, MS takes over uh, for years uh, and is, it is debil debilitating, it's autoimmune, uh, but again, it can be controlled uh, by medications. Uh, Lyme disease, that's one of them where you get hit by a bug, uh, a tick, uh, and oftentimes what you'll have is you'll have a rash, uh, you'll have flu-like symptoms, headaches, joint pain, so forth and so on. Uh, it's easily confused with other conditions, but uh, if you've been out in the woods uh, and oftentimes uh, if you get uh, bit by uh, this bug, uh, you'll see it actually swell up and so forth. And uh, that's one of the best ways to uh, uh, differentiate that because one of the histories is, hey, have you, been hunt uh, have you been out camping? Have you been out in the woods? So forth and so on. That's the easiest way uh, to find that. Lupus. Chronic inflammatory disease, again, th this oftentimes has a very easy way to diagnose. It's called a butterfly-shaped uh, rash across uh, the cheeks. However, many uh, people don't have this show up. And so, again, the symptoms can be uh, joint pain and uh, um, lungs, and it mimics other tissues, so forth and so on. Uh, there's no easy way to diagnose this. However, uh, they do blood tests, urine. Uh, and uh, um, they use medication to control this. And so lupus is something that is controllable. It does have symptoms that are similar to fibromyalgia, but if you have that uh, butterfly uh, rash, that's 100% uh, uh, diagnostic for lupus. Uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, irregular periods, uh, weight gain, hormonal, it's a hormonal disorder. Uh, and uh, you have ovarian cysts oftentimes form, uh, enlarged ovaries also, and that can be diagnosed uh, also by endoscopy or a variety of other conditions uh, or other tests, objective tests. Headaches in, cluster, uh, headaches in form of cluster headaches or migraines. Uh, cluster headaches usually, uh, just like it says, they're close together and bang, bang, bang. Oftentimes it's seasonal uh, and many times it's uh, misdiagnosed by either uh, an allergy or a sinus uh, infection. But uh, cluster headaches are something that oftentimes do show up seasonal. And uh, for those people that have them, they will tell you exactly, oh, yeah, it's a season coming up, and I know I'm expecting headaches. Now, as far as migraines are concerned, that's very interesting because uh, migraines are severe headaches, obviously, uh, nausea, throbbing, uh, vomitus, photosensitivity to light, uh, sensation, so forth. Oftentimes, migraines are triggered by foods, believe it or not, especially those that are, are processed foods, like you go to the, the uh, store and you buy processed meats, uh, you know, the uh, hams and the turkeys and so forth and so on in those big chunks and they, they slice off pieces. Uh, oftentimes that will trigger migraines, believe it or not. Uh, and a variety of other foods, pickled foods also can do that very, very easily. Uh, diabetes type two, uh, again, that's, uh, that should be diagnosed readily. Uh, there's, uh, again, a problem as far as symptoms that sometimes uh, fatigue uh, and aches and pains and so forth. But uh, that, again, should be alleviated not only uh, through uh, blood testing, but also proper medication and diet, okay? You know, you don't have to be stuck on, uh, on uh, medication for type 2 diabetes. If you go on a strict 
uh, low uh, glycemic carbohydrate diet. Stay off the starches and, and so forth. Sugars do not cause a lot of the problems as far as diabetes. A lot of people misdiagnose that. Uh, the, it's not so much the sugar. It's the carbohydrates uh, that are excess, and they cause the pancreas to produce excess amounts uh, of sugar, and they, they have no place to go, so it stays in the blood. Uh, anyway, and the last one is Sjogren's. Sjogren's is very, very interesting. It's almost, it's an autoimmune disease, almost 100% female, uh, inflammation of the glands. Matter of fact, chronic fatigue has the inflammation of the glands. That's a big thing also, sore throat, uh, whereas fibromyalgia patients really don't have that. Uh, but Sjogren's is the inflammation of the glands and other body tissues. Dry mouth is very, very common, uh, and uh, uh, it causes dental problems because without a dry mouth, uh, you have a, a tendency to have a lot of problems as far as teeth decay, uh, infections in the eyes, uh, breathing passages in the mouth, so forth, uh, can be uh, connected to rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, and scleroderma as far as conditions. But uh, these, again, the Sjogren's, uh, even though the, the symptoms are similar to fibromyalgia, can be easily diagnosed. So fibromyalgia covers a lot of these things, a lot of these symptoms, okay, that these other conditions have. But uh, the most important thing is if you should go to a doctor is make sure that you give them your whole story, not just what hurts that day, okay? Because you know if you have fibromyalgia, it could be stomach one day, then it could be a rash the next day, it could be headaches the next day, it could be joint pain the next day. It goes on and on and on. Give them your history, the whole history. And, you know, if you give you 30 seconds, grab them by the hand and say, listen to what I have to say. These are all the things I have, all of the symptoms, not just a headache today. I have other things that bother me, and it goes from one area to another. So he understands, okay, that you, you just don't have a headache, or you just don't have irritable bowel, or you just don't have a rash or joint pain, okay? And, and make sure that he understands the whole story. When you go to a doctor, it's not just yes, sir, no, sir. It's like you're the star of the show, okay, and you need to take the time and explain to him what the problems are, all of them, so that he can diagnose you properly. If you're having a problem with that, call me or Fibromyalgia Wellness Center uh, or 480-948-4955, 480-948-4955 in the clinic, and I'll try to help you uh, either directly or I can help you find somebody that will be able to listen to you properly. I want to thank you again very, very much. Wow. Okay, so I went over about, about three, four minutes, but as I say, there was 15, and there's some actual other ones that we didn't even cover that are just really secondary. Anyway, thank you so very, very much. Uh, thank you for all of the comments that you're making and everything else. Please feel free to contact me and let me know if I can be of any assistance to you in any way. Uh, that's what we do. We concentrate on working with patients to take care of, not only diagnose properly, but also take care of your condition. Fibromyalgia is difficult enough, and so we're trying to help you help help you by helping you understand and being able to uh, help you with uh, the condition itself and all the other secondary ones. Thank you very, very much. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy yourself. Next Monday, 1230, uh, I'll be covering another subject on fibromyalgia or fibromyalgia-related uh, conditions and symptoms or whatever. Okay. Uh, many times uh, I try to hold off because sometimes patients come in and give me the greatest stories that I can use uh, when I talk to you. Hey, thanks so very, very much. Again, each and every one of these are saved, so don't be afraid to go back to uh, Fiber Wellness Center, Facebook, and take a look and see uh, all the ones that we've covered in the past. Thank you very much. Again, have a great week. See you next week, 1230 p.m. Monday.